Hey folks, welcome back to GameSpot's coverage of E3 2016. I'm delighted to be joined by Olivier Palmieri from Ubisoft. Uh, sir, you are showing one of the many virtual reality games that Ubisoft are working on at the moment, um, Eagle Flight. Uh, you guys were on during the press conference mm -hmm. a couple of days ago. What's it been like getting reactions from people uh, for uh, seeing this game for the first time? So reactions are really amazing. People are amazed uh, by how uh, intuitive it is to control the game, but also how precise you are, you can be in the game, because we are really using the most of, uh, of VR. Uh, the game is really comfortable, but uh, you pick it up in a few minutes, and in a few minutes you become an expert of flight. Uh, you don't need a complicated control, so yeah, the reactions are, are very good so far. Uh, so you've been working at Ubisoft for a long, long time, almost two decades. You've got your yeah. you know, finger involved in everything 18 years. Yeah. Assassin's Creed to Far Cry to the Splinter Cells and Rayman. Um, <coughs> Tell me about the sort of the, the challenge there is with virtual reality, with like with making a game like this. You said you did quite a lot of research and development on this before yeah. you got it off the ground. So before we started the project, we did six months of uh, research on VR. I wanted to make sure that uh, we use the most of, uh, of VR headsets and, and VR in general. Uh, there was also this uh, problem of discomfort that can be in VR, so I wanted yes. to make sure that we can have lots of motion. Uh, and be very comfortable for most, <coughs> and also use the, mo the, the, the most of VR in terms of uh, accessibility, like being very intuitive, so everybody can pick up and enjoy being a, a bird, being a, an eagle, flying over Paris. At the same time, uh, being very precise, so you can be very precise, you can, you can go into tiny passages, like in the, the tunnel you can see here, uh, so it's, uh, it's a combination of, uh, of several elements to m that makes the, the most of VR. Uh, uh, most VR games, or at least a lot of the VR games we're seeing early on, have tried to restrict motion as much as yeah. possible. Yeah. You know, th it's all about <coughs> sort of small, minute motion. What what made you guys go in the complete opposite direction? I couldn't believe that VR uh, was doomed. Uh, right. In, in a way, to have to be only seated experience, non-moving experience. I was convinced uh, that you, it was possible. It, it it should have been possible. It would be possible to have lots of motion and. Uh, and leave the dream of being a, a bird, uh, being a, an eagle flying, uh, and do that in VR. So uh, I went uh, up to the wall and through the wall, and we uh, researched, we, we did studies to, to understand why uh, there can be discomfort, and uh, what we can do. So we have many techniques today. Uh, we have the beak you can see, and the, the beak and the eyebrows. Uh, we have uh, what we call the blinders, so it's the, the black elements, the blackness that comes on the sides uh, dynamically depending on uh, certain conditions. In fact, it's uh, uh, when you need it, uh, it's hiding your peripheral vision right. dynamically. Uh, it's also about the motion that is forward uh, with uh, no inertia. So there's lots of uh, a combination of elements that make it, uh, makes it possible. That's fascinating that the, the, the beak is actually an important sort of yeah. thing for... Uh, yeah. Is that something to do with how like, we, we, s we have our noses there at all time? And yes. we kind of know so our equilibrium or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in fact, uh, our brain is, is used to see our nose uh, all the time and it, it grounds us in the world. Yeah. Uh, in VR, the issue is that when you put the VR headset, then you don't see your nose anymore. Mm. So, uh, we did, uh, during the, the R&D phase, we also did another experience uh, where you were a human and we added the nose and, uh, and it was really helping to ground uh, the players and helping with comfort. So, uh, we found the equivalent in uh, Eagle, uh, <laughs> right, in Eagle uh, Universe. It's a good so thing. So, you have your beak and <laughs> it's really grounding you in the world and uh, gives you a, a referential also mm. for the world to, to, to know exactly also where you are. As I told you, the game is very precise, so it's also helping you to to gauge where you want to aim and uh, ah, yes. go in tiny It's like passages. a crosshair you've got yeah. on the end of your face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got the chance to play it, and you watch that footage, and it looks like, okay, but will it really f look that good right, when playing? Yeah. But it's really just you look where you want to go. You have the controller, which is doing, like, uh, you know, you can shoot out those sound waves when yeah. you're playing the multiplayer mode. But, I mean, immediately I was kind of dropping down, like, uh, into, like, those alleyways and then coming back up out of courtyards, at, and there's, like, a yeah. sense of momentum that feels... Awesome. So cool. we've yeah. talked about the game in, in, I guess, in the sense of like how it controls and, and virtual reality and all those important questions, which especially people, who, a lot of the people who watch these streams have never had the opportunity to put that, those headsets on. Uh, but let's sh shift a little bit to the gameplay. What exactly is going on in Eagle Fight? It, it seems to be like almost like a game of football between a bunch of different birds. <laughs> 
Okay, so in fact the full game has uh, three parts, let's say. <coughs> the first one is uh, called the free flight, so it's for every everybody to pick up the headset and enjoy exploring the city from a new point of view, the eagle point of view. Uh, then we have a, a single player mode, a story mode, and finally we have the multiplayer mode. So the multiplayer is about, it's called uh, capture the prey. So as an eagle you have to, uh, you have to Uh, capture a prey and bring it back to your nest to uh, nourish your mm. your your little eagles eaglets. <laughs> uh, and so there is two teams competing in Paris uh, to grab the the prey and deliver deliver it first to mm. the nest. Uh, what's Paris looks a little bit different. We see like Ile de France and, and Notre Dame here, but it looks like uh, there aren't many humans around anymore. <coughs> yeah. So the world is set 50 years after uh, humans left uh, the city. So uh, nature is reclaiming the city. Uh, animals are, uh, are are getting back in the, in the city. So there, there is actually a zoo uh, called the Zoo de Vincennes, uh, mm. close to, to Paris. And the, the animals escape from that zoo. And that's why you can see <laughs> giraffes and elephants and uh, zebras <laughs> in, in the city, wandering in the city. So it's truly... Uh, Nature taking back the city, and it's not it's not apocalyptic. I don't like this word. In fact, right, it's, yeah. it's really uh, positive. It's nature taking back the city mm. and making it beautiful. It's like Pripyat or something, or like <laughs> or Tokyo Jungle. It's like a yeah. kind of like a good thing. Um, so I guess who are you playing against? You said like the multiplayer game. Are we talking about playing online predominantly? I'm assuming <laughs> because virtual reality headsets. It's not like you have six of them lying around. Yeah. So that's another thing with VR. Uh, uh, we really wanted to make to, to show that uh, VR can be social. Uh, so it's a multiplayer game. Uh, you have teammates with you. So it's two teams of two teams of three players. It's six players in total, and uh, it's a social experience. And uh, so when with your teammates, you can uh, cover your teammate. Another one can play the sniper. Mm. Another one can be the the runner. You know, like he's grabbing the prey and. Uh, runs into the city, go inside the tunnels and under the, the bridges, etc. Uh, and yeah, each player can uh, have its own uh, strategy and tactics to, to make it happen. Uh, how do you sort of, uh, I guess, keep an eye on what your teammates are doing a lot of the time? Because it looks like, this quite, it looks like you'll have quite a lot to concentrate on because you're yeah. going to try and make sure you, you go in the right direction. <coughs> so how do you sort of keep your eye on what they're doing and work together as a team? So in VR, you have a, a large field of view, though. So uh, it's uh, fairly easy when you uh, climb up in the sky to see what is happening. Uh, that's what we, uh, we have in the game. In fact, uh, we chose Paris uh, because it's very organic. It's, uh, you have very tight streets. Mm. But sometimes it's uh, often it's very useful to climb uh, in the sky mm. and to have a, a, a very good overview of the city and uh, where are your teammates, where are the opponents, where is the prey. And it's really that gameplay of... Uh, Going up in the sky, then diving uh, into the tunnels, diving to, to get the prey. Uh, and uh, that allows you, with the large field of view, to, to see uh, what is happening and mm. where are everybody. Cool. And uh, Mike, you said you played this back at, was it GDC or was it here at E3? It was the uh, Oculus event before GDC. So I don't remember the beak. Was that implemented at the time? Yeah. Yes. Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah, maybe I just get, didn't notice it. it. Was the, yeah, it's probably... Yeah. It's, it's natural because you, it replaces yeah. your nose. So it's like... <laughs> well, it makes it feel like an extension <laughs> of your own face, yeah. right? Yeah, as opposed to just this huge block on your eyes. Right. Maybe your nose just looks like a beak when you're when, from your perspective <laughs> all maybe, the time. Maybe I just feel like yeah. an eagle all the time. Uh, what did the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay feel like to you, if you can go back then and remember? Yeah, yeah. No, like? the, the multiplayer mode that he was mentioning, uh, Prey. Yep. Oh, prey, yeah. It's, it's a rabbit. Mm. Yeah, you have, so you pick up the rabbits and then you want to just, it's like capture the flag essentially, but you know, you have these sound waves you're shooting out, right? Or mm -hmm. maybe not sound waves, but. Yeah, these, it's sound waves. Okay, yeah, yeah and then it, you can hit another eagle and it'll puff into like a cloud of feathers. <laughs> but, you know, it, you want to get the rabbit, but you as soon as you escape, you start, you want to like make it hard for people chasing you. Or because then a lot of people will be above the buildings waiting for you to come back out. Mm. So a lot of times they're going through alleyways or up through these like the cathedral attics. Yeah. Like you kind of go through like the entire building inside it almost. Mm. But then you know swoop down changing elevations uh it, it's fun to like be chased in that game because yeah. you're just having playing mind games with people that are right like behind you but then also like you're that's that last few seconds when you're about to bring it back to your nest but someone else was already like above you waiting and killing right. you yeah it's almost like we've seen a lot of like i guess dog fighting or spatial dog yeah. fighting games yeah. in virtual reality because mm -hmm. it seems to be a good fit it's like okay <coughs> you're walking around you're looking around um but this is sort of a, a unique game in that it's not just you against you know targeting things it's more about your movement within the world as opposed to like what you're trying to hit all the time yeah it's also about the the dream of being a, a bird and a, and a flying over a, a known city a, a wonderful city um 
our controls are really on the fact that you can uh, move your head and mm. uh, it's everything is done with your head and that's why it's uh, so intuitive for everybody to to enjoy it and so precise at the same time so space shooter in vr it's it's great but it may may not be uh, as intuitive and as precise it's, mm. it's something else you can use a, a joystick etc our game has a more simple approach but uh, I i'd like to compare it to a sport you know uh, the, the the multiplayer mode uh, uh, as uh, as rules uh, that are uh, globally fairly simple but in yeah. fact there's a lot of depth uh, uh, like soccer you you have to to, to grab the uh, grab the the, the prey and uh, bring it back and uh, you are very precise with your head so we also wanted to 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 set apart from the from the other games yeah. and uh, that was personally my dream uh, of flying i, I did the uh, uh, many and many dreams about flying since I'm a child yeah. so I really wanted to, to have more because dreams usually you, you dream about uh, of flying but it's two minutes one minute <laughs> and then <laughs> it stops yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I wanted more so I wanted to, to find a way and VR is a way to uh, make my dream come true and I'm, I'm sure make the dream of many people come true That's to wonderful. fly as a bird did you grow up in Paris as well or yes Exactly. So this is perfect. This is exactly what <laughs> It's excellent. Uh, what is, I guess, I'm, I'm fascinated to talk to somebody who has developed and worked on so many games who's now directing a sort of a virtual reality only experience. Because there's lots of games that are sort of using VR as well. But like, this seems to be like you're dead set on just like working within this. What are some of the most difficult sort of obstacles you've had as a director, as a designer of this game, to try and make this something that people can play and not feel like they want to like get sick, like something that makes them feel positive as no. opposed to negative? But in fact, so VR is a new medium. Uh, it's a big challenge, but uh, I like challenges. And so uh, it's, it's great to be able to develop on a new platform and uh, find uh, you know, those new challenges of, uh, of comfort and also on controls. How are we mm. going to make these, the, the controls easy to pick up? Uh, you know, on, on Rayman, for example, we really tried also to make the game intuitive and, and easy to pick up and play. Yeah. Uh, though you, there's lots of uh, depth and, and replayability and uh, and very uh, tough challenges also in the end in Rayman, and that's that's uh, uh, what we are aiming for also for 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 Eagle Flight. Uh, so those challenges are very interesting. In fact, uh, to to discover a completely new medium and uh, study uh, the, the 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 best use we can make and uh, and, and and all of that. Um, so when is it out and on what platforms? So it will be uh, released uh, in fall 2016 on the PlayStation VR, Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. Awesome. Uh, will it be a launch title for PlayStation VR? Or will it be? At uh, this it's uh, undecided yet. But okay. Uh, Still figuring it out. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Olivier, for coming on and showing us Eagle Flight. Uh, merci beaucoup and merci. Uh, good best of luck with the rest of the development as well. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much as well. Merci beaucoup to all of you as well. My te French is terrible. That's better. All I can <laughs> say. <laughs> Uh, Désolé. Um, we have, uh, I believe, Mr. Schaefer in the wings to come on and talk about another virtual reality game. He just wooed himself. Uh, <laughs> so let's get him on to talk about Psychonauts in the Rumbus of Ruin in just a second. Stay there. You're watching the GameSpot stage, brought to you by Airheads.